you know, you know it just came, came from a place of um, a, just a lot of frustration, and uh, and I think by looking into the darkness, you can reveal the light. And I promise you, like in a little bit of time, as it settles in, you're gonna feel a lot better. <laughs> 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 Don't you love that people are just talking about it, good or bad, or all the discussion? I think that's one of the exciting things about film that we some it, it's been lost a little bit by. You know, a lot of film seems to be, you know, you just sort of forget about it, but the films that inspire me are the ones that me and my friends are up all night talking about it afterwards. And I think we tried to do something similar here was to really um, bring in a lot of different ideas and layers and stuff so that there was many, many interpretations. Although I think all the interpretations lean into what we were going for. Um, they just sort of get there in different ways. And you're famous for spending a lot of time on your movies, like writing the script, cracking it. Is it true this was like pounded out in five days? Uh, the script, not the movie. Yeah, <laughs> the script came really quick. It was, um, I, I had the idea of trying to create this allegory of, um, like, I, I, you know, it's very easy to understand someone screwing shit, shit up in your house, but it's very hard to understand, you know, things going wrong on a global scale. So I had this idea of taking it and making a small story, uh, and that kind of started the uh, that started the process, and then it kind of really just poured out. And for you guys, I mean, you've all worked with him on so many movies. Matthew, I think you've shot all of his films since Pi. Is that correct? I didn't do the rest of them. Oh well, I, I didn't like that. <laughs> But I mean, did you even know this was something he was mulling over? And what is it like when you know Darren comes to you and says he's ready to do a project? Do you ever know what to expect? Well, I mean, this is the only one that came to us without us knowing about it beforehand. So always the project has been developed, and you know we know what's going on. This one, he showed up and said, "Guys, I wrote something." So yeah, it was a surprise because then we basically read that. We, we had to get our heads around it and, and figure it out. So uh, it was a total surprise, and, but a good one. And what's, what's like your first reaction? Do you immediately start thinking like, oh, we gotta find a house, and are you thinking of color palettes? Um, first reaction I had this one was um, excited. You know, I was very excited by it. And I knew it was a film that um, we'd have to make right away. Um, you know, I remember talking to Darren, you know, shortly after, talking about how to make it in the process. I don't know, it's easy, you know, it's a, one location, the only place in the house. <laughs> <laughs> you know. uh, but uh, you know, we, we knew the challenges. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that's a great thing about working with such a great team and, and people they've worked with for so long. Um, you know, we've had a great um, group of collaborators that, you know, we could just, you know, break it up into pieces and figure it out and, uh, and get it done. And Matthew, Jennifer Lawrence has gone on record saying you're like the greatest cinematographer she's worked with, um, which is really nice considering you're in her face for, I think it's 66 minutes of close-ups? Yeah, 66. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, well, thank you, Jennifer, that's not like But, um, you know, it's just about the movie, just driving the film. And, 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 you know, the cinematography doesn't exist as a film is as successful as a film. So, you know, Darren and I have been together for so long. And it's just the narrative drives the camera and the, the camera drives the light. So, you know, we, you know, we have a shorthand, but we still sort of deconstruct it at the very beginning and talk about color palette and production design. And then we talk about, mostly we talk about camera language. And this, uh, what you see is something that was set up and talked about when we first started talking about the film, is a sense of subjectivity. So the camera being in your face, so to speak, it's just um, a way for us to articulate that this is the person we're paying attention to, this is the person we're driving through this scenario with. And I think something else that is unusual for you, or maybe not, but um, you had a three month rehearsal process? Yeah. Well, after I wrote it very quickly, to be fair, there was a lot of symbolism, and there was the stars of the characters, and then me and the actors, uh, Javier and Jen, went to a warehouse out of Brooklyn. And to be honest, my favorite part of Working in movies is working with actors. No offense to you, man. I like to work with you too. Um, but, uh, but as a director, you only get to do it for like two months every three years. 
So this was a way of cheating and getting a little extra time with the actors, and just also it was just it was a lot of fun trying to develop it and, and just work it out. So we taped out the floor, we taped out the whole floor plan of the of the house, and then Maddie came down, and we sh the last two weeks we brought in Michelle and Ed and Donald and Brian, and we actually shot the entire movie like single takes, and then Andy our editor kind of together, and then we kind of had this. 110 minute long version of the film without hair or makeup or walls even. And it was, it didn't really teach much, but it allowed, I think the, one of the things besides the actors getting a sense of how the camera was gonna work with them, me and Manny were able to figure out a lot of like stuff, technical things like, because the camera is constantly tracking and where the line is for any of the film people out there. It was very, very tricky because she kept crossing the line and how do you establish point, you know, direct screen direction. And we were able to figure out most of those problems before we got to set. Uh, I'm curious because every movie uh, provides challenges, but for the producers, what the, this one had, must have had a whole unique, unique set of challenges. What ended up being the most difficult part for you from a logistical or, or personal standpoint? Um, yeah, yeah, every film does have different challenges, and, and they're all different, and that's what makes, you know, what we do so exciting is that, you know, every time we, we set the tackle of the film, it's, it's always something different and, and a different experience. Um, to me, this one was, um, the, the, the biggest challenge this one was really um, capturing all of Dan's vision that was on the page, and more importantly, his vision that wasn't on the page. It, it, was, so, it was so deep and so layered that, um, you know, it, in anyone else's hands, you're in danger of becoming just ordinary. And, um, it, you know, it, to me, I'm, very, I'm extremely proud of it. It's anything about that. Was there something that you looked at on the page and said, I have no idea how we're going to do this? Me? <laughs> so, when Darren talked about the rehearsal, there was a, so in that first script that Darren brought, there was a lot of different ideas. And one of the big challenges that I think that got worked out in the rehearsal and then in sort of that period between reading that script and the script getting made was aligning all those pieces together. So they're all pulling together and they weren't pulling in different directions because there was a lot of say, is it gonna go cohere? And that was a big, long process of getting all the pieces to cohere so all the different ideas made sense together. And that took a while. Um, I yeah, I was just going to say, I know we have some questions from the audience, so, uh, uh, right here. Hi, um, this is actually a question for Darren. I know that you're a producer on the upcoming National Geographic program of Planet Earth. Which is all it's called One Strange, Strange Rock. Rock. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's called One Strange Rock, and it's all about Planet Earth. Uh, I was wondering if it's fair to read this movie <laughs> as a parable about the way that we did Earth. Question about the I, I think, think he gets, gets like a free poster, poster or something. Wait, wait, I have something for you. Here, would you like one of these? Yeah, you can have one. Again, there's a ton of them. Yeah, I mean, that's where it started. It was, uh, I mean, I wanted to make a film not about your mother or my mother, but our mother gave us life and telephone from Mars. And we wanted to make a film about that. And that's where it started. It was, uh, I mean, I wanted to make a film not about your mother or my mother, but our mother gave us life and telephone from her point of view. Right here. I was curious, since it's different women, um, is it always Earth every time over and over, or is he, is God just oh, this like is a going? good audience. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people will go, what the hell are they talking about? Yeah. Um, so it's the same Earth, it's not like he's going to different M-class planets and just messing them all up? <laughs> Believe me, me and Jennifer had that conversation, she was like, so what this girl afterwards is, Mars? Yes. And I, you know, I think it had to do with uh, the whole idea of the cycle of creation and destruction. I mean, you can read it in a few ways. You can read it like something will come after us if we end up consuming ourselves. Um, you know, they might be giant, really super intelligent cockroaches that kill each other or whatever. But or 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 it may be just about just even more abstracting it and just saying just the idea of starting again, and going through it again. It, it, that was, for me, it was a really interesting place in the film because it kind of, I think the allegory is, um, you know, 98% of the film follows the allegory, but there's this human story about this, you know, uh, narcissistic creator who uh, has a caretaker and basically the hard love is not enough for him. 
because he needs the Son of Love, needs to be worshipped, and uh, eventually he consumes it completely. For me, it's a lot about everyone in the film is insatiable and constantly taking and consuming. And um, I mean, that's, that's where it becomes a reflection back on us, sadly. And it, like Matty, the one thing he said in on a while back was that it's not just a reflection, it's actually a question of him, which I like because I don't think our final chapter with Mother Earth is written yet. You know, we're sort of seeing her wrath right now. It's kind of the scene when Jen starts attacking the crowd. That's I kind of what I, like when I was directing her in the scene, I was like, okay, now you're a hurricane and you're a tornado. You're a forest fire. That's what's going to do in an earthquake, literally. And so, you know, but that chapter's not written, I think. I'm very much an optimist and uh, working to, you know, but I couldn't help the passion and the, and the fear and the pain to come out and work, so. Is it a coincidence she blows them off of fossil fuel? <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's great. <laughs> no, I, yes, yes, it is a coincidence. I didn't know that. Okay. But uh, I ignored it. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, take it from the back. If, uh, Anyone up there? How about right back there in the middle? Yes. So, how about the microcosm of just personal life, you know, that people go through working into the story? Because I saw the sort of the universe and and all that stuff and the ungratefulness. But then, on a personal note, like, is there anything in your creative life that influenced the way in which he, as a creator, just as someone who creates art? You're talking about, about me? <laughs> oh, yeah, or anyone around. I mean, look, I, you know, luckily filmmaking isn't one of those 24-7 uh, jobs. Um, I date basically for two months out of every two, three years, I have to be completely selfish and surrender to the work and it becomes my life. Maybe it's a little longer than that. The rest of the time it's a nine to five job, so it's actually not so bad. I go to the edit room and then I get to be a parent. But I definitely can identify with that character. And it, it's, it's a bit of a trope, but I think for me, that character came out of, you know, thinking about, you know, the character in the Bible uh, and how how interesting that the Old Testament God is all about worship. Like on day six, after he's created the world, he decided to create these naughty creatures. He, he was like interested in seeing what happens. And then he's really interested in them, you know, constantly praying to him. And if he doesn't pray to him, he, you know, gets really angry. And to me, that was like a really interesting inspiration, a place to start and kind of tell human, the story of people on the planet. So if you kind of walk through it, you know, like, you know, the first man who shows up, Ed Harris, would be... Dad. <laughs> and then Michelle Pfeiffer would be... And then the kids, the, the boys would be... And then the sink breaks and it's, the water comes down. And so the whole, it's all in order, the whole Old Testament. Actually, a lot of the dialogue is all from the Bible and then the New Testament starts. Did you um, refer your actors to the Bible at all? I, they, everyone was aware of the allegory and the symbolism, and they were able to pull from it. So like Michelle was like, how do I play it? And I was thinking about Eve. And to me, the only, ad, me and I spent a lot of time talking about it, and the only adjective that came to me possibly was mischief. Yes. She's kind of a mischievous character, you know, a little naughty, picking the apple. I mean, that's one way of reading into it. So I gave that to Michelle and she turned into a cat and Jennifer was her mouse and that, that just like just flowed out of her. She loved it and ran with it. So they were able to kind of, you know, go back and forth with those different ideas. Um, I think, do we have time for one more question? Sure. What, we'll take one more. Sure, sure. right here. Uh, for the producers, how tough a sell was the concept? How tough a sell was the concept? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I guess you would think it would be a tough sell. Um, Jennifer Lawrence cheap movie. 
basically added up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, right? What you yeah, yeah, but it's a reasonable budget. Was it a tough sell to the cast? I mean, uh, they, what, <laughs> just real quick, the story was they were, I, I, we never thought of Jen because she was so busy. And then we got a call that she might be available. And I remember calling Scott as I was and she was filming in Atlanta, and I was just complaining about she's never going to do this. And then we got, I, I got there, I met with her, and she signed up in the room. So it was real quick. And then Javier. And then she called you when you left. Like, well, I got to eat. I think it was a good thing. You guys, I want to thank you so much for being such a great Thank you very much. Thank you.